Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Friday, November 12th, 4.54 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from the financial capital of the world, St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's uniquely incredible, uniquely unforgettable, spectacular, incredible, big show. That's right, the Friday edition of the Revere Market Insight video where we go through the prior week, take a look at the key levels for next week, and update the world famous 21 over 21 leaders list. Also going to go through 11 charts of crypto related tickers. These are companies that are uh, engaged in the crypto sphere and um, a lot of nice charts in there. We hadn't reviewed these before, so I want to go ahead and uh, get get the get them all uh, consolidated into one list. Go through them and see what we can see here. So let's get right into it. State of the market uptrend and midweek when we had really a really ugly day for growth leaders on Wednesday. We downgraded leadership from uh, bullish to neutral sliding that back over to bullish slash uptrend as there was absolutely no follow through selling to uh, the, uh, and there really was some carnage that we saw the G5 down nearly 3% on Wednesday. That's a really big move down when uh, the other indexes just moved, uh, you know, within their, their normal range. We were com uh, comparing uh, Wednesday to back in uh, mid to at the end of February when uh, the first shot across the bow with growth leaders and looking for any follow through selling to that. We really didn't see it except in a couple of select names, but that's natural as uh, names come in and out of favor all the time. So that's what uh, that's what just happened. Positive action to end the week. No follow through selling. G5 up 0.8%, S&P up 0.7%, NASDAQ up 1.05%, Dow up a half percent, mid caps up 0.3%, Russell up 0.1%. Uh, really, the the Russell uh, the Russell growth portion was up 0.4%, and the value portion down 0.1%. So. Um, you can see that uh, reflected in, in what the G5 did today as the Russell growth component is uh, one of the five index ETFs that make up uh, that make up the G5. So, so that's where we are. Let's get into the charts. But uh, I did mention, I didn't mention, uh, I mentioned the leaders. I didn't mention that we are, of course, still uh, bullish across all three time frames that we track because our short term, medium term and long term uh, moving averages are all eclipsed by the current price action of the five major indexes. So let's get into uh, the team run and revere here. We're a completely transparent registered investment advisor, puts out content six nights a week, plus bonus videos on YouTube and um, what we do is invest in the leading stocks and the leading sectors in an uptrend and lighten exposure and get out or get out of the way completely depending on how severe a sell-off or uh, a uh, consolidation which could turn into a downtrend uh, might become. So active management, uh, we're very proud of the record that we've put up here and if you have any uh, questions at all, please reach out to us. Uh, the head honcho, Dan Stewart, uh, one of the most knowledgeable financial minds in the business. He can be reached at dan at revereasset.com. If you want to talk about uh, short-term signals or inter-asset correlation, give Tim a shout. Tim at revereasset.com. If you're interested in asking questions about coming on board, reach out to Mural, Mural at revereasset.com. And if you have questions about the portfolios, you can either email Hunter, Alex, or Don at revereasset.com and of course you can always call 855 real wealth that's 855 732 5932 let's get in to the charts here and let me bring up my market facts page here uh, so as i mentioned uptrend we move leaders from neutral back to up today uh, no real headwinds or tailwinds. I mean, they're leaning one way or the other a little bit, but sentiment, the put-call ratio, the dollar, and rates 
uh, not acting as a major force against stock price uh, recently. From a bullish case, we've always got a bull and a bear case. Bull case, we want to stay above the 21 and the 50-day moving average, of course, and we've been staying above there. Uh, the two-day pullback didn't even approach the 21 on the S&P or the Qs. On the other hand, should we fail, our prior breakout above the all-time high of 45.46, which was made uh, in the beginning of September, that's uh, that should contain any pullback. Uh, the 21-day exponential moving average is now above that, which is good. 50-day moving average is coming up through 4,500 next week, and then uh, just 46 points away from that. Really good. It would be very beneficial to the market to get the 50-day moving average above uh, the prior all-time high. So, uh, any some news today? Johnson and Johnson following the lead of GE, uh, J&J planning to split into two companies. And uh, as far as Tesla goes, Elon is still selling shares, so that put Tesla under some pressure today. Uh, from a portfolio standpoint, standpoint, over the last two days, we've added back some of the exposure that we took off uh, on Wednesday during the harsh sell-off. Sectors that led today, uh, marijuana stocks continue to look good. Let's go through these charts, MSOS. Uh, we added a little bit to this position today, taking it up to a 3%. Uh, the political winds changing in favor of that today. Uh, ITB, which is uh, home builders, Alex latched onto this a couple weeks ago, and this has really continued to build a very nice, uh, strong case for the right side of the base, major relative strength over the last week and a half. Uh, IGV, uh, this is the ETF for software stocks, bounced off the 21-day exponential moving average. Nice move up today. And Meta, we're going to start hearing a lot more about this, the Metaverse. Facebook kind of kicked this off with their uh, news that they're going to, that they have already changed their company name to Meta Holdings. And um, two Metaverse stocks had really big weeks, uh, Unity Software and Roblox, and we're in Roblox. So this is something you're going to hear us start talking about a lot lately. On the downside, uh, oils lagged banks lagged and defensive sectors utilities staples and real estate lagged so the key levels let's get back to the s p 500 here blow up the chart a little bit uh the key levels we got uh let's comment first on the adma it's flattened out we got below it we broke below it on a below it on 11 10 recovered from it the last two days so it's flat we're keeping an eye on that Wednesday is going to serve as kind of an inflection point. Any pullback, uh, we, we break below Wednesday's lows. That's going to be something to uh, pay attention to. Uh, when you have a harsh pullback, especially one that affects the growth areas of the market, you want to see that those lows hold. So start off with the ADMA. The 21 EMA is now above 4,600 for the first time. That's our next level. Uh, we're 1.7% above that on the S&P. Uh, the prior all-time high breakout, 45.46. We already mentioned that. 50-day moving average is at 44.92. As I said, that'll come through 4,500 uh, for the first time next week. And uh, the prior pullback, uh, the bounce from nine, the 923-ish from the last pullback, um, we get down there, we'll now be below the 50-day moving average. And by then, we will have probably reduced most of our exposure uh, the prior pullback range, 4,300 to 4,430. 4,300 is the absolute line in the sand that would be below uh, this area here where we pulled back on the correction late September into early October, and then the rising 200-day moving average at all-time highs, 10.1% down at 42.53. So those are the key areas on the S&P 500 to pay attention to. Uh, let's get to the NASDAQ 100, very similar action to the Qs. You can see the pullback broke below the 8, didn't touch the 21, and now back below the back above the 8 to close the week. Very positive action there. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average uh, showed some relative strength late last week, early this week, then lagged, started lagging again when the NASDAQ and tech uh, reasserted its leadership over Thursday and Friday. Still a really good looking chart above the 21. Mid caps, MDY, holding above this breakout level. It's pullback just barely got 
uh, undercut and closed on the ADMA, showing some nice relative strength over the last week and a half, and really over the last three weeks. And then finally, IWM, I'm going to show that first, then I'm going to show the value and growth components. Here's IWM, same situation, one close below the eight, back above it with two tight inside days. Uh, we show some more strength in this and break above Thursday's high. We're going to uh, get into, most likely take an index long uh, on small caps next week with some of the powder that uh, the dry powder that we have available. So let's look first of all at IWN. This is the value component. Two tight inside days again, right around this breakout area, 174.60. Uh, bounced off the ADMA, that looks good, lagged a little bit today as I mentioned, and IWO, IWO, the growth component, <laughs> if I could type, IWO, the growth component, you can see the big pullback on Wednesday, close below the ADMA, back above it with two tight range days, Thursday and Friday. This low in IWO, very critical. We haven't broken out yet on the growth uh, portion of uh, small caps, as you can notice here, we still got room to go up to the upside 340. Uh, so still a lot of room to run from for this if uh, we can get a good growth rally going or continuing, I should say. It really has been uh, working pretty well over the last couple of weeks before the pullback uh, today. Of course, the follow through day was on 1014 that kicked off this most recent rally. So that's the uh, the key areas on the indexes that we uh, want to take a look at. Now let's get into uh, this crypto 11 uh, tickers that I want to mention. I want to do those first. And these are sorted by 50 day dollar volume moving average. So the most liquid first. Um, we're kind of diving into what these companies are doing, uh, but for now we know that some of them have very clearly become liquid enough for us to invest in, and they're really showing relative strength. So, uh, Marathon Digital uh, mines cryptocurrencies. A lot of these miners are uh, getting out of the having to pay high energy costs by going to uh, either hydro or solar power. And that's uh, really cutting their costs, and then they just benefit by uh, the price of Bitcoin going higher, plain and simple. So Mara, really the the largest and the most liquid Riot blockchain, another one. Uh, one, it's actually one of the dirty thirty from this harsh pullback uh, in February and March, but now broke out of this cup, this bottoming cup base. Uh, today, MicroStrategy. This has been on the list for a while. As Michael Saylor, the CEO, huge Bitcoin guy, he's added uh, a lot of Bitcoin to their balance sheet. You can also see that broke out of a cup and handle this week. BITO. This is the futures ETF, the first uh, uh, approved ETF. We're still really waiting on one that uh, is based on spot Bitcoin, not the futures contracts, but BITO the most well-known and most liquid. GBTC is the uh, old reliable traded over the counter. Uh, this is an ETN, not an ETF, and it's pretty much tied to uh, Bitcoin, but it is also uh, trades at a discount, doesn't track the price directly, whereas an ETF, if it comes, uh, that tracks spot will stay in sync with it. Next up is Bakht Holdings, BKKT, really uh, wild action here. This is a SPAC. I, I think it's a SPAC. Um, you can see the big move out a couple weeks ago, just made one of those nutty runs and then uh, pulled back and uh, bounced at the 21, then actually closed below the 21 today, did not have a good day. Uh, ETHE, this is the Ethereum uh, ETF tracks the price of ethereum but again trades at a discount not a true not a true etf it's an etn a trust and it does trade uh otc because the sec has not approved uh an ethereum etf either uh si silvergate this is something we've owned we're not in it currently made some nice profits recently on this big run uh this is basically a bank uh, Silvergate that has created uh, SCN, the Silvergate Exchange Network that um, digital currencies trade on, kind of a pioneer in the group. Hut Mining, 
uh, riding the 21 day higher showing superior relative strength. Bitfarms BITF uh, broke out, lower price stock, but fairly liquid. Uh, 62 million the 50 day average, but that's really, uh, we, we, we kind of insist on 100 million daily volume before we get into something. This is way down the list, though, because uh, we really don't traffic typically in $8 stocks, but um, you can't argue with the chart. And finally, Hive on the thin side, too. Uh, State-of-the-art green energy crypto mining um, broke out, kind of went on kind of a, a big run earlier this week, pulled back to the 21 again not something we'll be getting into because it's uh trades four bucks a share so that's the 11 the crypto 11 let's get now to the 21 over 21 list yeah i've got a few lists here so so the first thing we do as always is start off with what got punted uh from the 21 over 21 list from last week first one is tesla because of the volatility caused by Elon selling, you never know what the next tweet of his is going to be. And in fact, it closed below the 21 day exponential moving average. So that got punted off. We do still own a small position in that in house uh, affirm, AFRM. Wild ride on this one this week. Big move down, shook us completely out before they announced earnings uh, in sympathy with upstart moving down. Then it uh, gapped up 30%, sold off, closed near the bottom of the range, broke that low, closed right below the 21. This thing needs to settle down. Uh, great fundamental story, uh, just a little too wild right now. So that got punted. And finally, bros, hate to say it, um, closed below the 21. We own uh, a small position in this also. So this sold off, it's had this very nice quick run. Uh, we can have a whole different discussion on O'Neill's eight-week rule on this as to whether or not you should or should not hold it because it moved up 30% within three weeks from the IPO base breakout, uh, but had a close below the 21. We got out of most of our position. Then uh, on its earnings report, big move higher, uh, sucked us in to buy a little piece of it now, one close below the 21. As I said, we do still have a small position in this. Uh, but the line in the sand here is on the 60 level. So those are the three that got punted. What got added? We're going to sort these. We've got 12 uh, sectors, 18 industry groups this week. That's where you get your diversification. You don't need to buy. Um, you don't need to buy foreign stocks to be diversified and look at the lagging relative strength on these. You don't need to buy emerging markets to be diversified when they're in a clear downtrend below the 200 day moving average. Uh, as disciples of William O'Neill, we realize that we can stick with the US exchanges and get our diversification from different uh, in sectors and industry groups. And that's why I highlight every week how many, how diversified the 21 over 21 list is. So let's start off with Roblox, new entry. Took a position in this on this monster gap up. I talked about this on Tuesday. A thousand percent volume. You just don't see that often. And um, it's a change in character for the stock. It tells you that uh, Wall Street is offsides. It's had a very tough day on Wednesday when the gross sell-off was happening. My stop was 2% below the low of the gap up day and it didn't get triggered. And now it's recovered nicely over the last two days. We added another percent to this today, bringing it up to a 4% size. Very volatile, We've got profits on our sides. Um, if it uh, fails, we'll be out by break even now on this one. But this was a beautiful breakout, stage one flat base, massive volume. Uh, inflection repoint gap up on earnings. Uh, yeah, it had a nasty pullback, but we held it because it didn't violate our bottom of the gap up day rules just barely. Uh, and now two day recovery, very nice Roblox. Uh, this is part of the metaverse, building three dimensional games. Um, you're gonna start hearing a lot about uh, the metaverse as I mentioned. So second one added, the trade desk, don't own this. Uh, changing character for the stock on this earnings report, day two higher high, also on very big volume, pulled back right to the pivot 
and then just a really great day today. Look at how volume dried up on the two-day pullback, right at the 100 level now, looking for a pullback to the ADMA to get an entry uh, on this. Be happy if I get that. We've been talking about how gold stocks have been improving, so we're putting one on the list, the best acting one, Franco Nevada, forming the nice right side of this cup uh, cup base, broke out above this 145-ish level this week, uh, pulled back on Wednesday along with the rest of the market, and then two up days on higher volume over the last two days. Note the relative strength over the last week and a half. You're seeing this across uh, pretty much all gold and silver stocks, so getting Franco Nevada. And we bought Nugget today in UGT. This is the two times GDX. Uh, again, note the relative strength over the last week and a half. Um, came off the bottom, pulled back a little bit right, stopped right where it should have on the pullback around the uh, 50 and the 21. Uh, nice up move above the 200-day moving average. So Nugget is how we're playing uh, gold stocks as of right now. So the survivors or the carryovers from uh, the rest of the 21 over 21 list, Zscaler, far and away the leader in uh, computer security stocks, continues to trend nicely above the eight. Airbnb, uh, big move up on earnings with volume, a two-day harsh pullback, which was in keeping with what happened uh, with growth stocks. Inside day Wednesday, when the rest of them were pulling back, this was a sign for, hey, the selling's over, and then big move up today. Note the declining volume during the sell-off, ascending volume today, increased volume as it got back above the high of the gap up day. This is very high on our purchase list, too. Coinbase, another one that had uh, a negative reaction to earnings, nice run up. Heck, why don't I have this in the crypto list? It absolutely needs to be in there. That's just a brain fart on on my part. So it's a, it's a list of 12 now, not a list of 13. Uh, pullback on its earnings day, which was also the gross sell-off day, recovered most of that um, gap down day. And uh, this is all, the volume wasn't there really. This is again also something that we're looking closely at. Uh, big institutional leader. They missed on earnings, uh, but as long as you don't break the bottom of the low on your earnings reaction day and you're above the 21, it's a healthy stock. Snowflake, upgrade today, up on volume. Uh, this thing looks fantastic. Look how it has been riding the 8 EMA higher. Beautiful looking chart. New, this is uh, the best chart of the steel stocks, pulled back, bounced off the 21-day exponential moving average as it's trying to finish the right side of its base. Enphase, the absolute leader in solar. We own TAN as uh, we didn't buy this on the big gap up. Uh, gave us a chance with the pullback to the eight and then two very strong days on higher volume than the pullback volume. Um, as I said, we're playing solar with TAN as there's some broad strength in the sector, but Enphase is the leader. SU Energy pulling back five straight days below average volume as oil stocks have pulled back this week. Uh, still looking fine above the 21, of course. Dexcom, higher highs, pulled back on uh, growth sell-off day on Wednesday, two days of higher high. This is the actual best chart that you can find for anything that sold off on uh, Wednesday's growth sell-off day. If you're above uh, the high of Wednesday, you're a very, uh, very much a leading stock. J.B. Hunt, not a growth stock transport stock. Looks great though. Got to 200 today before pulling back. Live Nation, one of the very clear leaders in a reopening play. Big back, big gap up, but I don't like how it's broken the low. This is on thin ice. Broke the low of the um, gap up day. Five straight days of selling. Uh, today really, well, it's still above the 21, but um, Skating on thin ice, you know what I'm saying. Silvergate, we already talked about this. Uh, one of the leaders in um, crypto processing. Ethereum still looks great. Uh, Signature Bank of New York, one of the best bank stocks. Banks are consolidating here. We've got our eye on FAS, really tight action in the financials uh, around this 21-day exponential moving average. Any strength, we're probably looking at taking a position to that CBRE real estate development stock uh, flagging above the 21 net added some more to this today I'm gonna do um, I'm gonna 
do a video on how we snuck back into this and have profits while it was still extended, uh, starting with this move below the ADMA. As you know, we got stopped out down here, didn't get back in when it started its run, but the action was just screaming, yo, find a way to get into this. Uh, and I'm going to review how we did it probably next Tuesday. Uh, Bill, gap up on earnings, flagging off of that. Amberella uh, sold some of this on the sell-off down to the 21 when it broke the 8. A uh, little bit of sideways action and some volume comes in, which it hasn't been over the last couple of days. We may buy our position back on there, but there are plenty of other things working great. And then finally, Datadog, uh, gap up on earnings, flagging since then. And that's your 21 over 21 list. And uh, that is going to wrap it. As always, I'd like to hear from you. I'm on Twitter at dvandenboard. Email donnaerverasset.com. The phone is 855-REAL-WEALTH. Got your key levels for next week. Let me show them one more time. This is the plan that we're following. And um, that's going to do it. Wrapping up the week ending November 12th. This is Don Vandenborg telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great weekend.